Hello, hi, how are you today? I'm Patricia. So in this video, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about what I've gone through um, in order to be at the point I am. Now, a lot of you might see me in a video and there's a thing that I do in videos. I pretty much do them in one take. I know what I wanna talk about. I get guidance and I ask for guidance. I ask for the right words. In today's video, I wanna talk about how I got to this point and some of the stumbling blocks and all of the crap because I did not want to do videos. <laughs> I actually find I like it very much. Um, I find it very concise. I find it very expedient. I mean, little did I know, like a lot of us, that YouTube would grow and that it's so easy to convey things with that picture that speaks a thousand words, right? That's the way it should be. That's the way your own visions work. That's the way your own dreams work. It's a picture that speaks a thousand words. It immerses you in the feelings and emotion. So for me, this has been in, I would call them like major steps in my life that I sometimes didn't always know. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about maybe the past 10 years or so. So, what I had, what started happening with me, and I've since documented this in a webinar, but I talked about, you know, how your life breaks down. You start feeling dissatisfied at work, but major parts of your life are dissatisfying. And you could be going through it also in a rela an important relationship like a marriage. Your marriage just seems like it's on the rocks. Well, mine was on the rocks. And many times it felt like I was at a crossroads. I could feel it. I didn't see what the next part of the road was. I could simply feel it. And I'm like, I've always believed in God. In fact, that's sometimes when it's really gotten me by is I've been like, God, it's me and you. But I didn't always make time to meditate, okay? That was one of the major mistakes of my life that I won't even call it all my fault, but it just simply wasn't taught. You know, I think a lot of people are not really taught that from an early age, and it, it means different things to different people. Many people are taught to pray, but they're not taught to, you know, wait for an answer to come, which frankly, most of the time will come through a meditation. So I didn't know this. I had to get myself really still to try and get any inkling of what was happening to me. Okay, because it literally felt like that. I It was like almost like standing in a place where I felt like earthquake rubble was going down around me. Like it's just going down and I'm standing there. It was health stuff. It was like weird sudden onset of things like an earache, um, things with a lot of upper respiratory that's been all my life upper respiratory viruses. I wouldn't be surprised if I've kicked COVID more than once, but who knew back in the day, right? Asthma, allergies. Now, the really interesting thing is I was able through my own sense of survival to get somewhere, but not knowing how or why, except by the force of my own will. I willed myself. I have come through probably about five near-death experiences. Not all of them were in the car, but one of them was in the car. One of them was in water. I've had phobias to get rid of, okay? Now, sometimes you look at someone and you're like, you have no idea of what they've been through. I have learned through the years to, you know, not always take people at face value, but to feel them, to learn what to trust and to hear their experiences and feel where are they coming from. This has served me very well. This has helped guide me on who I can trust, who's just someone temporary in my life, and who is really someone that you need to boot out and kick out. When the marriage was going down, I really was like, I don't want to break this down. I did a lot of like what you might call soul searching. Was I a failure? Was there something I didn't try? Did I leave no stone unturned? And in the end, I had to simply admit, this is going down no matter what I do. It's time to acknowledge it, not be in denial. Now, 
it needed some assistance from myself to myself to get it on track. I literally had to roll up my sleeves and take charge of the situation. Otherwise, it was going to get bad, like really bad, like financially bad, emotionally bad. And that is when uh, I realized some of the things that I still teach now to people who are trying to break down a relationship or a marriage and do it the proper way and do it for the highest and best good of all. I've had to teach others because I've had to get through it myself about bullying, about workplace bullying, about workplace gossip, my own kid being bullied. So there have been health issues, emotional issues, mental issues. So some of the mental issues, this is really crazy, um, being made to feel like I was crazy, like I literally had a mental illness so much that I almost wrote a book called I had a mental illness for three days because it was like I was plunged in, like, you know, when you dunk something in the water and then you pull it out and I was like beside myself. But this gave me a deep understanding of how addled some people actually are. And that to them, that is what their experience is. And it gave me a lot of compassion, but something beyond that including my light body and how I'm able to teach this of how do you get out of it? Because I would lay awake at night worried and worried for other people and worried for my family. Like, what if this happened to them? What, you know, like, where does it originate from? Where in the ancestry is this? What came first, the chicken or the egg? Alcoholism runs in my family. Is it because of that? Is it because of that cousin who committed suicide? Like, is that the mental thing? It's all of it, really. It's all of it that your soul and your spirit and your higher self completely wants to get rid of from you, okay? Now, it doesn't all happen at the same time simply because from a higher perspective, you're not expected to be overwhelmed. You're expected to be able to address this in an expedient manner, but step by step so that you can take care of your responsibilities. There was another thing I learned. So you know how I said I didn't meditate? I went into meditations that were hours long. They were really nice. I had a three-year-old kid. He would be like, mommy, I'm hungry. Okay, wait just a minute. And this was another thing that I learned about this ascension. We are not to shirk our responsibilities. We're not to put we have to have a balance between that side of ourselves that does need to meditate and the side of ourselves that needs to live a human life. And so I started saying no, and that was the right answer. The right answer is you are not going to be Zen about everything. You are not going to be able to shut the world down and meditate. Everything's not going to be perfectly shutting down for your convenience to be all quiet. Even when you go somewhere, like I was doing a workshop at a place, it was right on the pathway for ambulances to get to the local hospital. Almost every 30 minutes, there was an ambulance, you know, with the sirens and everything going while we were trying to meditate. You have to be able to do this stuff and you have to be able to engage your light body connections, your twin flame body connections in a moment's notice. That is not only what I realized for myself, but it is what I teach people. How can you distinguish in the moment? How can you do this on your feet, on the fly? So I stopped those lengthy meditations. Now, the year of the pandemic was actually very much a challenge for everyone, for me, um, because the people around me, it felt like they were dropping like flies. And it was not easy to see people, and yet I engaged them with breath work, which did help a lot. It wasn't the same as their full ascension. However, I was able to learn a lot from it. One of the main things I learned is people just don't engage the parts of them that breathe. They don't do it properly. They don't do it consistently. It diminishes as we age, and it is vitally important. The older you are on your twin flame journey, 
the more you're going to have to focus on this part of you that actually breathes. That was one of the biggest, you know, glaring signposts of the pandemic. Breathe. Please breathe. Okay, breathe properly. Don't just breathe. Don't just breathe the oxygen. Breathe in a way that is significant for both of your bodies to refresh you, to deeply bring it into the channels and get those opened. So I had to learn how to do that. I had to learn to take my meditations to another level because you know what happened? It started feeling like I was dying. I got so sick one time, I didn't even know what to do. I had the feeling like I got hit by a truck, that someone had taken like a wedge and like, you know, was doing this to my head to split it open. I know what that was. It was the two lobes of the brain and the expansion of it. Now, I also had other sensations and sensations that felt like heart, or I'm sorry, head orgasms. This was of the crown that was beginning to expand and pulse, but this happened after I got through the nasty part of purging out all of that, like weird head, headaches, head stress, you name it, having your head cracked open like a nut <laughs> to get stuff out, okay? Now, a lot of people don't know what's happening, which is why I try to engage people with my videos so that I can inform you and teach you. And I do so much more in the one-on-one -on -one sector and in the webinar sector. But you can still learn and you still have to grow and you're still expected to do this. What are some of the other things that I experienced? Oh, the food weirdnesses. <laughs> Food weirdnesses, I mean, feeling allergic, feeling like certain foods are just going to make you cry or you have a breakdown, feeling like you can't eat this or that, feeling a sudden reaction, feeling the cravings, feeling like you're eating for two. I was able to discern and really glean what are the reasons, why are you going through this? Not only that, how do you get through it? What herbs and supplements actually help you with that? How do you properly utilize things like fasting or intermittent fasting or, you know, what I call it, um, if you're going to eat one meal a day, how do you utilize that for your own good and for the good of each other? How do you balance that when you have a family, if you have kids to feed, if you're the main cook in your family, if you're responsible for things? How do you balance that? How do you get other people on board? Well, I found ways to do it, and it's not easy because people resist. They're like, I want pizza, and you're like, no, I have to have juice. <laughs> it's not easy to get people to do this with you. So in order to make it easy, you have to make it tasty. You have to make it palatable. You can't do it all the time. You have to ease it in little by little and then sustain that and then do it seasonally. You do it seasonally. Once you've done it, you do it seasonally at least, just like house cleaning, okay? You're going to, I don't know how big of a house you have, but when I was growing up, we didn't have a big house, and we would literally have to take the summer stuff out of storage. That was our summer clothing, decorations, you know, different things. And, you know, at the end of the season, we'd put that back. We had our fall stuff. We had our winter stuff. We were constantly working. Now, if you look at people years ago, or even if you look at films, you can see they're a lot thinner because they were doing a lot of extra steps and they were eating differently. Part of the reason that in modern times you see so many people with metabolic issues is they need to connect to the new grid. They need their blueprint, their body blueprint for eating, for digestion, for their endocrine system, for their hormones, for their enzymes. And again, back to digestion, they need that new template connected to their body. Otherwise, it just seems like people are failing. And that's not really what is intended to happen. What's intended to happen is to get people in a mode where they feel, they sense, they can intuit, they can feel what's appropriate for any given season. They can feel what their body, body really needs. 
and there is a basic skeleton of an outline that I have done in my inner healing book. My inner healing book has this information and honestly, I could make it into like a two book cookbook, you know, plan. I'd love to do that one day. If people are interested in recipes and cook, cooking and how to do this, um, I do have some of it in there, very little. I have so much more that I like to do live. Um, what if you have to eat a certain way or because of how you were raised or what you feel? You know, people get confused. Do I have to be vegan? If I'm ascending, do I have to be a vegetarian? Do I have to be paleo? Do I have to be keto? Do I have to be vegan? And I'm going to hear, you're going to hear me say this. No, no, you don't have to. Do you want to? Do you still want to? Is that what you needed to do to get you by? Because frankly, when we were paleo during the ice age, you had sticks and you had meat. You killed an animal, you roasted the meat, that was part of it, and you collected some kind of sticks. Like, there's really ancient foods, like asparagus is one of the most ancient foods. I love it. Some people don't, they're like, oh, my pee smells. Frankly, deal with it. <laughs> because it has a lot of good stuff in it. It has good aminos in it. It has really good stuff for cleansing your urinary tract. And it's ancient, ancient foods, primitive primal, sensual, okay? That's my personal preference. You don't have to agree with me, but what you do have to agree with is in ascension, there is a way to do it and there is a way to up level how you eat, what you eat and feel good about it. Not feel guilt and shame, not feel like, you know, it's a constant conflict of like, who's got to do what? Look, everyone has different grocery stores, I know people who live in affluent areas, but because the grocery stores really can't afford the exorbitant rents over there, it's like a food desert. There's people that drive into different neighborhoods just because they can get reasonably priced food. There are people who live in real crime-filled areas. They cannot get a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables or good food. Or it's like, you know, behind like bulletproof glass. I mean, there's literally fast food restaurants in some neighborhoods that are behind bulletproof glass because that's how rough the neighborhood is. But people still have to eat. Do you like to eat? I've known people that they wish they could take one pill a day. That is not how you're designed. You're designed for variety. Look, the twin flame angelic side of you loves variety craves variety, wants to be a little provocative sometimes, needs the ingredients to build you up and keep it interesting. So whether or not you cook or you don't cook, some of us are gifted like that. This is one of my gifts. And this is something I've had to learn. I've had to learn it, but luckily, I've enjoyed eating in foods that I've been able to teach people and give them tips, tricks, help them tweak it, help them customize it for themselves. If they want to stay keto or paleo or vegan, hey, there's a lot of modifications that I can help you do to keep in line with how you like to do it. That is one of the beauty parts of this whole thing is that it's customizable. Okay, you have a basic skeleton. It's like someone giving you a car. You got a brand new vehicle. Are you gonna put pinstripes on it, a decal, custom paint job? You're gonna put spoilers, you're gonna trick it out, you're going to tweak the carburetor or fuel injection. Are you going to customize the interior? Are you gonna add accessories? Are you adding a sound system? Yeah, that and more times two. So I hope this video has helped you. Please think about joining my class. The link is below. We're going to do six weeks with a couple bonus days for solstice, for the um, moon energy, and we're going to talk about this. Okay, it's interactive. You're going to move. You're going to integrate. You're going to like it. And hope to see you soon. Have a good day.